All roads, in a way, lead back to climate change. And now Brexit is uh, disappearing into the... Uh, it's a, it's a heliocentric solar system, not a, not a heliocentric universe. Thank you, Alan. Of course, a terrible mistake by me. And uh, big shout to Martin, who points out that Galileo Galilei could never have had an iPhone, James, because he was a poor boy from a poor family. It's a very good point, Martin, and, and I, I, I stand corrected. But all roads lead back to here, to, to the denial of it. And I have, in recent years, been a little bit guilty. I, I think the snooker was the one that did me. When they threw orange powder onto the snooker at the Crucible in the middle of the World Championships, and I sort of thought, oh, look, I understand why you're doing it. I understand why you're doing it. But for heaven's sake, this isn't working. And then you look at the f scenes in Spain. You, you, you look at the scenes in Spain, and you kind of think, we're never going to stop, are we? We're, we're never going to do it. Spain could have spent over the last 10 years, on measures that would have massively mitigated. So could New Orleans, that would have massively mis mitigated the uh, reality that they're facing this week, the tragedy that they're facing this week. Roads cut off, railway services non-existent, um, sport, the, 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 the storm moving north at the moment, continuing to batter. Some of the headlines are unbearable. Unbear uh, you know, screams coming from a care home for the elderly as the floodwaters rose. People being found in cellars who had been up to their neck. Um, and I presume the reason you go into a cellar, even though you're up to your neck in water, is because it minimises your risk of being hit over the head with a falling roof beam or, 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 or similar. Um, elderly were screaming for help as waters rose. And, and the, the scenes of cars... You know when you watch a Hollywood movie and the cars are what they use to demonstrate to you the force of the explosion? More than the people, it's the cars. It's the cars that are bouncing around like matchboxes. The cars that are being torn apart as if by a, a, a kind of um, a, a mythic Greek figure from Greek mythology. You've got the cars upside down. You've got the cars bouncing down roads. You've got the cars piled up on top of each other. And you sort of think, wow, we are as nothing as a species, to cope with this. We are like, what are we like? We're like, we're like matchsticks in the wind. But we can do a hell of a lot more. And we don't. So, what's the question? I, I, I mean, I'm going to nick Sheila's question in the first instance. Do you think we owe an apology to climate change protesters who are risking their liberty they're risking their, their health, both mental and physical. They are sacrificing their futures and their livelihoods because they dedicate themselves so completely to sounding the alarm bells about incidents precisely like this. Let me read you this sentence. At midday yesterday, the first military vehicles began to arrive. Pei Porter is not the only town to have suffered, but the price it has paid appears to be the highest. Astonishingly, in adjacent towns, the equivalent of an entire year's rain fell in eight hours... But in Pei Porter, there was hardly any. Antonio Tarazona, 59, said he had watched helplessly as his wife, Lourdes Maria Garcia, 34, and their three-month-old baby were swept away in the family car by floodwaters. The last time he saw them, they were clinging on to the roof of the vehicle. Nearby, Mati Ribarroca, 75, stood in the remains of the ground floor of her apartment building. Only a single shelf of books cupped beneath the ceiling survived. The family's car was gone, carried away in the flood. It's extraordinary, Mark tells us, cars floating down the road with people still in them, people clinging to the roofs. And the people that are warning us about all of this are currently in this country set to be sent to jail if they deploy tactics that are successful. Give me a ring and tell me I'm going mad, right? And, and I speak as someone who has lost a little bit of oomph when it comes to supporting these people. We're sending them to jail. If they protest in a way that we don't notice, they're golden, they're fine. If they protest in a way that doesn't attract any attention at all, they're golden, they're fine. If they protest in a way that means no camera crews will turn up, no journalists will turn up, no newspapers will report it the following morning, then that's fine, they won't go to jail. But if they report it in a way that gets noticed, they go to jail. I don't think they found, and why am I saying they? I could say you, and I should say we but for now it's you. You still haven't found a way of attracting anything like the attention that you need without breaking the law. 
What does that say about our society? I always do this. I go from not knowing what question I'm going to ask to asking you about 30, which makes it impossible for you to ring in and know what you're supposed to say. But don't worry, just ring in and talk. What? Why? How, how, why is this a place? Why is this a world? It's not a British problem. It's not even an Anglosphere problem. Why is this a world in which the people who are warning us about what the world is going to look like if we don't take serious and immediate action about climate change have to go to jail? if they manage to find some tactics that actually succeed in attracting our attention. Just stop oil. It's not quite four years for a Zoom meeting. They're usually in contempt. They've usually failed to abide by the last sentence they received. But yeah, I mean, listen, if it was a right-wing newspaper writing the story up from the opposite perspective, four years for a Zoom meeting would be your front page. And so, are you in the mood for psychology? We've done philosophy. How do we manage? It's that bloody film again, isn't it? It's that Leonardo DiCaprio film again. We're not looking up. That's it. So the pictures in Spain, don't look at them. And if you do look at them, don't think about Just Stop Oil protesters or, or, or net zero legislation, net zero policies. So how do we do that? How do we do that? On a personal level... Do you want to apologise to climate change protesters, having seen the scenes in Spain? 03456060973. Is that a stupid question? If so, why? 03456060973. How do we do this? How, how do we hold in our head at the same time the scenes in Spain and the widespread derision and at least scepticism of climate change protesters? Just, just, just marry those two phenomena together for me and explain, and I'm a bit guilty of it myself, I'm not doing holier than now today, I'll always give you a quick heads up when I am. How do we do it? So I'm looking at the pictures in Spain, and I could still muster up a five minute monologue on what a bunch of hairy, unwashed goons the Just Stop Oil protesters are. I wouldn't mean it necessarily, but hey, clicks and giggles, right? How do we do that? How do we see the scenes in Spain and still not pick it up, still not recognise the... Um, moment yeah you're right you got me dave i was an absolute I, I i was pretty rude about the cornflower people the people who threw cornflower at stonehenge if i remember correctly maybe i wasn't maybe i'm being unkind on myself that's the catholicism but it's so easy to do and yet here it is 21 minutes after 11 is the time sorry that went on for rather longer than i was expecting oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number you need how do we manage to simultaneously see the scenes the apocalyptic scenes in spain and still feel skeptical or even rude about about climate change protesters as a climate change protester or as a climate change advocate what does the story in spain say to you and why are we not why are we still not taking this stuff seriously?